Okay, guys. Now, <clears throat> haters will rejoice. I made a major screw up on the GT40 race project that took a ton of work to fix. And you're going to look at the results and say, that's not even possible. I really can't blame you because it surprised me. Okay, first sheet you're going to see is it, this manifold, this old Cobra Shelby that's had a ton of work done to it, was tested just like this, which I think is probably the best combo, right? Which is the Wilson one inch tapered going into the manifold. All right, nice looking piece. You guys have seen how much work went on in the plenum. Well, guess what? Due to a, a mistake on my part, some of this plenum actually got a little bit more work. But the major amount of work is here. We'll just take a look at number four. Now, you can see the outline of the gasket. That is the 1262 Ford gasket, I believe, which wasn't even part of this project. That's actually, a, um, I just traced that gasket from the Blueprint project because he brought gaskets, which was great. And if you notice, this is an absolute minimum thickness for gasket retention. Because when I was all done and I was going to test this on the, the head, I thought I had the manifold about where it needs to be. Most runners are right around 250, which is still below where I wanted it to be. I put it all up and I ran the boroscope through it. And we had an interference on the top of where this port, no, scratch that, that's incorrect. We had that much of an interference on, on the bottom, as in this bottom was a half, a quarter of an inch deeper than the cylinder head. So we had this huge lip at the cylinder head. Now, the only way to fix that is to fill this with epoxy or take some off the cylinder head. I wasn't going to use epoxy on this. So the gasket opening on the cylinder head is taller than it was. Now, if you're smart, you can use that to your advantage, even though it is lowering the port, the port which may not help. But if your pinch is such that you can slow your pinch down a little bit and get the air around the short side a little better, it may not be a loser. Well, we had to do some work on the head. We had to do a ton of work on the intake because once you increase this height to make it match, and in reality, this is a tiny bit smaller. I mean, if you can see the line, okay, the manifold is a tiny amount smaller than the head itself all around. I want it that way. And you may see this isn't 100% perfectly flat and square. Yeah, that's the very absolute final finesse nonsense that drives me crazy. So, what did we wind up doing? Well, if you increase this, okay, that ruins your taper into the whole manifold. You can't just you can't just have it like a bell mouth. That isn't going to work. And the problem with these is these runners are so deep and long, you can't get to the entire thing. So you have to use your head and figure out what you can and cannot do. Now, I'm not going to lie. The roof of this port is really thin. Come to think of it, they all are. I had to actually use the Sonic to make sure I didn't go, go too thin or make it so it'll fail while be in use. And... <laughs> what wound up happening is our short straight runners needed a ton of ton of work due to that extra area, which made them flow even better. So our ratio of worst flowing port to best flowing port is kind of out the window at this point. Okay, you guys have seen this before, but you've never seen it with the full match. Okay, so what we're doing is we're going to compare... This Wilson four-hole tapered, which is where we were, to where we are. Yeah, 265 to 292. Huge jump. Now, this is just a manifold on the bench, stuffed with foam in the holes that we're not using. Are we going to get leakage? Sure you will. I try to keep the leakage the same as I can on all of them. 
Okay, we went from 256 to 295. These are our straight ports. They flowed pretty well as it was. 248, 281. 250, 293. We all went up. 290, 290, 290. Not bad, right? This side's not quite as good. Number one, which is a, a lower. That is by far our lowest runner as far as flow. We went 254, 276. Our two upper runners which are two and three. These are the ones that look like a tunnel ram. They did get some work in the plenum because I had to add area to those runners to make them have some type of taper all the way down to the runner. They went a little crazy. We went from 269 to 2, 323, and 324. It is kind of interesting how they were very even and are still quite even. And our last one went from 258 to 283. All right. Now the big question is, did it make a difference on the cylinder head? Because that's where it's really going to count. And uh, the story goes, I was having a conversation with uh, Brian Salter and he's, and, um, and I asked him straight up, I'm like, how much horsepower do you think this will make where we are right now? And he's like, I don't see it making more than 450, 475 at max. And I'm like, I agree with you. I'm going to need to do a little more to hit 500. Well, by the end of this, I need you guys to give me your opinion whether we're going to get that mark right. Now, in order to do that, that is a 12.5 to 1, 292, revving to 8,500 RPM. I do believe this manifold will go there. Is it going to be balanced? N not really. It's off by 48 CFM. Now, is that the end of the world? I got news for you. Most manifolds are that bad. Um, could I put more work into it? I am so far over on hours on this manifold. My wife would choke me if I put another minute into it. But that's what uh, German wives do. Just digging through my flow sheets to go to the next segment of this video. And I ran across this one. This is the seventh cut on the head. I was already pissed at that point, right? The head was flowing 240 and change. Put the manifold and everything on it. We're only doing 198. Keep that in mind when we move on. All right, well, I thought I reflowed the head just by itself, and I did a sheet. I can't find it. But in any case, this is what we got. This was number five port. We've done most of our testing on number five, and that number five was was flowing to 60-something. So I'm sure it's flowing at least that right now after some more work. <clears throat> Sorry about that, guys. Too much been going on lately. I'm behind. So what I did is this is tested just with the manifold with the carb on it. Okay. So we're going, in reality, Mike Jones says you probably use a 650 lift carb. So we're 220. Okay. And we've got 1076 swirl. Notice our swirl curve is very low. And finally, when it loses it on the short side, around 600 and change, we get some swirl. Not necessarily bad. Now this was on our number five, number five cylinder head, number five intake port on the manifold. Okay, in reality, we've done most of the testing on this number five because it's an upper H and it's one of the lowest flowing runners. Okay, it's been hit or miss as far as after our balancing work has been done. It's flowing pretty good right now. Okay, number five upper right now we're flowing 292 okay and on a head that's flowing 260 plus all right so that makes sense why we're only going 222 now let's do our same thing but we're going to put on the, the, the spacers all right one inch wills wilson spacer which i liked how it did it last time we ran it it, it was it picked up a few cfm all right as far as this the uh, one inch Wilson tapered plus 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 plus. All right, we're starting to get there now. We're two twenty six point five at six fifty. Not bad. That'll uh, this is probably my go to setup right now. If he has the room under the hood, he said he can put a, probably about a one inch spacer. That's where I would go to right now. All right. The next test is the one inch. Open spacer, which I don't like quite as much. Let's do some pluses and minuses. 
Okay, open spacer. Minus, 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 plus, tiny plus, equals, plus, plus, tiny plus, equals, minus, minus. I don't like it as much. We didn't discuss the swirl. The swirl is actually quite good, right? Rel relatively low. Has a kick when it loses it on the short side. Same over here, okay? So it's all going through the same intake port on the manifold. All going through number five, which flowed fairly well. Okay. So now we're going to do... All I did is I took the intake manifold off and I switched it around. So it went from runner number five to runner number four, which is down here, right? This is capped off, this vent here. And we're going to run through number four. This is all that cap that's always capped off. Okay, how do we do as far as number four on this? 283 verse 292. You would expect it to go down. But this is a lower H. Remember, lower H has got more room for the air to get organized to go down the runner. So just because it doesn't blow quite as well doesn't mean it's not going to work as well or better when you bolt it to the engine. So let's take a look. So this is number five. This is number four. This is lower H. Okay, fairly even from the upper H to the lower H. What do we got? Equals, plus, minus, minus, plus, 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 plus. 229.3. 229.3. 229 Go to Wilson's calculator and you guys let me know what you can get out of that. For that nasty 292 with lots of RPM. And I think we're there. Now, is there anything left to get? Um, no, I don't, I don't think so. I think we've had it. Our swirl curve, very similar, even though it's a different, you know, it's coming in at a different angle to the head. Okay, the number four is a much flatter port than the number five. Number five is coming up from above on the upper H. All right, guys. Sorry I was a little disorganized this morning. Got a lot going on. Got literally like eight boxes of goodies that came in. And I am so far behind. I'm trying to grind out this uh, this project and move on to the next the next couple projects. You guys are gonna love. I guarantee it. Uh, got a lot of cool stuff going on. I wanted to mention Eric. Eric did a great live video where he took a 355, mostly stock short block. He had upgraded pistons. It had powdered metal rods, which, as far as I'm concerned, is dust glued together. Powdered metal is kind of cool, but uh, the little bit of research I did to it, they take they take the metal that's all ground up, and they blast it with a huge amount of amperage and melt it all together. Interesting idea. I personally don't like it. Um, there's nothing better than a good forged rod, as far as I'm concerned. Now, there can always be problems with forgings. There can always be problems with powdered metal. So it's a powdered metal with upgraded ARP bolts. Now, I didn't even think you could do that with those because I think those were cracked cap. You guys will have to let me know. I've never done a set of powdered rods. Got tons of experience with, with forged rods. Them I know how to get some serious power out of and not worry about it. So they, <laughs> they took this engine and they bolted on a big supercharger with a little pulley and cracked over 1,000 horsepower. 1,056, I think he did. And you could see on the the graph where the pulley was was starting to slip and it had had a couple issues and it didn't blow up and uh, it did even better than I expected. I know, I know how how bad we beat the the old three fifties back in the day, and they always held up. Sometimes even with cast pistons. I know it doesn't sound right. I was a forged piston guy, and I used to spend a week doing my connecting rods. So spinning them to seven thousand wasn't really a problem. Good stuff. Make sure you guys watch it. Thanks for hanging out. Have a good night.